very good morning, good evening and welcome to all my friends who are taking this total quality management class. I am Raghunandan Sangupta from and the IME department IIT Kanpur. So, if you remember we have discussed about the different metrics of quality, how it can be measured, what are the quantities, so called quantitative and qualitative feel of quality. And quality as I said and in the two lectures out of the three which I have taken. So, I always mention that it is something to do with the philosophy, how you do things and always trying to improve the overall process or overall qualities of services you gave or the overall quality of the product you are going to deliver. And obviously, there would be has to be some cost implications which we will see later, but uh, the important fact is that you have to basically increase the concept of quality consciousness inside you, so as that you can basically utilize that to improve the overall process. So, this is a, a inner thought process which has to come, but having said that the course which you are going to deal would be not of philosophical terms, it would be more on practical sense in the way that we will be dealing with the different type of tools, statistical uh, processes or different type of distributions which can be utilized on the shop floor for the services as that you get some tangible feel that how quality can be improved. So, this is the fourth lecture. So, coming back to the quality planning, so basically what does quality planning mean? So, it means a strategic activity without which enormous amount of time, energy, effort and obviously cost may be wasted in dealing with faulty designs, not actually properly made products, services not being delivered properly, manufacturing defects being there, customer complaints being there, customers not being satisfied. So, obviously, it is it's it's an activity which has to be done in such a way. So, all these negative things which are in the whole process are reduced to the maximum possible extent. Obviously, it is not always possible to make it 0, but we will basically everybody would aim to make it as close as possible to 0, so that you are able to render the product as it is with, with all its specifications and what the customer wants. Quality planning also involves identifying the internal and external customers and listening to their needs listening to the voice of customers. So, basically it means the customers internally, you may be asking who are the internal customers. So, say for example, if I am the person who is delivering raw materials to the manufacturing plant inside the factory. So, if I basically have the raw materials in pellets or they are in, in bins. So, obviously, the, the pass on materials should be such that they have the highest quality to the manufacturer units as that they are able to deliver the products further on to the customers. So, obviously, my customers would be both internal and as well obviously, they would be external, but I would always try to treat, I means the person who is delivering the product, the services would always try to treat customers both internally and externally with the same level of, of competence with same level of seriousness as that you are able to deliver the products at each in each and every stage without any so called defect. Quality planning also means helps in developing products or services that exceed customer expectation. So, if I buy a product and uh, considering the cost is comparable to the other ones and if I see the warranty life of the products is much more and the product actually functions beyond that, the, that warranty rate, obviously I am satisfied considering that I, I have been able to get the goods worth the money based on which I have made a plan to buy those products. So, as, as I said that it helps in developing products and services that um, exceeds the customer satisfaction level. Now, coming back to the concept of quality assurance, quality assurance it is the set of activities that ensures the quality level of products and uh, services which are properly maintained such that the supplier and customer quality issues are properly resolved. So, obviously, how would you try to basically resolve this concept using the concept of, of quality assurance? Obviously, there would be documentation, documentation how the quality system works, what type of sampling plan you have, how you collect the products, what type of different type of process control charts are there, how, what type of training you give to the actually shop floor personals who are doing that work. So, documentation of the quality system would basically have in details the policy, the procedures, work instructions, specifications 
and the records which will be maintained in, uh, on a time to time basis as that it gives you a flow that how the overall quality assurance system works. It would also have in details the policies. So, policies would be what is to be done in case say for example, defect of say for example, type 1 occurs or say for example, what, what would you do if say for example, you are manufacturing a, a, a car and the car is being painted say for example, there is a dent or there is a the quality of the paint is not up to the standard or the shade of the paint which you want to deliver onto the product which is the car which is further on to be developed delivered onto the customer whether the shade is not proper. So, obviously, you will basically have a very set policy that what corrective actions you would take basically to rectify that. Or say for example, you are manufacturing a, a fridge or considering you are manufacturing a washing machine and in the washing machine the motor is not working properly or the balancing is not proper. So, what are the policies would you do? Would you basically dismantle the machine and again work it or you basically will basically scrap it. So, obviously, the policies sh should be very well written down so that people follow the same thing wherever they are and basically follow this procedures up to the satisfaction of the customer. Now, customer may be as I said it can be both internal and external. So, quality assurance would also have the procedure, the methods and who are the person and who are going to work. So, of, as I have said that the procedures that what step should come after the first. So, if say for example, there is a problem in, in the forging machine. So, what ac actual action you would take to basically rectify that product and considering that you are utilizing that, that machine to manufacturing some goods. Or say for example, coming to the service industries if the, uh, the services whether the doctor or whether the engineer who is working to deliver some products and trying to basically um, make a toll bridge or, or say for example, a road where there is a toll tax to be paid and the machine uh, which, which collects the toll considering is an automatic one is not working properly. So, obviously, that there should be a policy that how you will basically rectify that. So, work instruction and specification should be given in clear details so that the workman or the person who is basically working on that or the person who is delivering the services or the person who is manufacturing the product are well aware that in case these deviations in quality occurs what action he or she would take. The next point to be discussed is basically quality control and improvements. So, under that we have three points which are the set of activities used to ensure that the products and the services meet the requirement standards as set and what are the customers needs and how they are being met and are improved on a continuous basis so that the customer always sees that the product which is buying products or the services whatever he or she is buying is basically able to meet the, the required standards what he or she wants and in say for example, you get an extra benefit. Like say, I am not talking about the benefits in terms of perks or benefit in terms of little extra on goods which you get. Say for example, the, the, the machine which you purchased and say for example, if the machine is able to, to perform at a higher uh, environment temperature. Consider you have bought a laptop and considering the overall environment over the, the atmosphere, what type of dust, what are type of pollution, what type of heat variations, temperature variations are there in any tropical country. And if the laptop is able to perform beyond that also without basically breaking down, then the customers would definitely feel that whatever they have purchased based on their actual expectation is being met more such obviously, it exceeds the expectation based on the level of services which is which are being provided by the service provider or the manufacturer to the customer. Since variability, now whenever I did mention about variability which basically we, we talk in very simple parlance and white noise, this is the effect which is there from the environment on the system. So, consider you are manufacturing again uh, a tie rod in a car or you are manufacturing say for example, uh, a table or a chair as a carpenter or say for example, you are doing giving some services delivering some products or say for example, you are running a school you are giving some education to the students to the society. So, on all these things they would be variability, variability considered from the point of view of the school may be 
the quality of these teachers. Maybe say for example, the quality of the library services which you provide, maybe the quality of say for example, different type of internet services which you provide to the students. So, all these things would be there as a part and part of the system. Consider coming back to the hospital, doctors may be of different caliber, nurses may be of different caliber. Say for example, you would not maybe considering the cost structure, you do not have those type of equipments which are required say for example, for MRI or um, um, uh, the concept of say for example, different type of x-rays you want to do or different type of biopsies you want to do. So, all these things would basically have an effect such that there is a huge amount of white noise. So, these white noises or the vari variability which is there in the process are the most major source of poor con quality implication for the whole process. This involves using of statistical package uh, concepts or techniques like if you remember I have been mentioning about, about different type of charts, p charts, x bar charts, r charts. So, all these things are to be utilized to, in to order, uh, uh, understand whether the variability in the process is due to the white noises which you cannot control or where they are inherent in the process due to which you have to take some corrective actions. So, these type of statistical techniques main important being the statistical process control and the design of experiments. So, in the initial part as you remember this is total quality management say for example, part 1. So, we will be laying a huge amount of stress on statistical process control and the different charts and later on in total quality management 2, we will have a whole lot of series of lectures and examples where we will consider the concept of design of experiments and how it is utilized in order to basically have a good knowledge about the different type of statistical process control techniques and different type of, of mathematical statistical methods which you try to utilize for quality control. So, the another the last the another point about quality control and improvement would be so they are often done in a project on a project basis. So, what we see the quality as, um, aspect for, for one may not be applicable for the other. Say for example, if I am seeing the humidity is a main factor which can be considered as a white noise in some of the processes. Consider the process being you are trying to basically manufacture a, 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 a microwave where the level of, of effect of humidity is very high. Or say for example, you are trying to basically manufacture an AC or consider you are trying to manufacture a water heater where the fluctuations of the overall humidity in that place or in that room has a huge amount of effect. So, maybe humidity may not be applicable when you are trying to basically design a car. So, all the aspects of the white noise variations which you have obviously, they come from the environment, but the what are the actual implications of the major effects of the white noise would have for one particular product may not be applicable for the other. But in general, we will try to understand what are the tools which are utilized to understand the effect of white noise and the internal variations and how we pay basically try to separate them and study them independent of each other. May, and obviously, it, may, it would mean that we are considering a very simplistic notion that the independent structure may not hold for the effects when you are considering them on a standalone basis, but still try to basically proceed considering the effects in such a way that we have some very simple statistical method based on which we can study and, and understand how the process works and how it can be improved considering quality is the main factor on which we are going to lay our stress. So, these two URLs which are there in front of you, obviously, I am not going to show that. We, I would strongly urge the participants, strongly urge the students. So, these two are some uh, very nice videos on, on YouTube related to two of the main pioneers in quality. One was by the name of Juran, I will come to that, that person's little bit description later on and another is by the name of Deming. So, and there is a very, uh, very interesting history that how Deming who was basically from USA and, and how the Japanese utilize his help and his concepts in order to basically improve their quality and basically capture the manufacturing market in USA. That is a, his, that has a whole lot of historical perspective, but I just thought I will, I will show you or give you the URLs of these two very interesting videos. And I would strongly urge that people if they have time 
uh, can go into the details of these videos of Deming and Juran that will give you a very good concept that what is the concept of quality and how, how phys, phys, uh, conceptually quality has been ingrained into the whole overall system of many of the firms or many of the on the manufacturing in the service sector industries based on what actually quality means for them. This is a very general uh, video. So, as I said, I will try to basically discuss or, or mention the names of few important persons who have been pioneers in the area of total quality management and their contributions have been such that they are really considered the pioneer father figures in this area of quality management or quality. So, the quality philosophy and management strategies of W. Edwards Deming were basically they were based on 14 points. So, I will slow go through them very briefly, try to give you a philosophical feel that what Deming meant by these 14 points of quality based on which one can analyze a whole situation whether manufacturing, whether services, whatever it is, what are the quality implications for those services and the products. So, the first point is create a constant constancy of purpose focused on the improvement of the products and the services. So, obviously, you are all you, you means you as a main uh, service provider, you as the main person who is basically manufacturing this product, you may be a CEO, you may be say for example, shop floor manager, you may be the general manager production planning and control, you may be the general manager in HR, you may be a housewife if you are trying to basically analyze the quality of the services which you give to your family member, it may be say for example, the pizza delivery boy, it can be the barber, it can be the, the, the person who delivers the milk, it can be the newspaper vendor, whoever it is, it can be the doctor, the dentist and all these things. So, obviously, have a purpose based on which you will always fo focus that how you want to basically improve your quality. So, say for example, if I am teaching. And I am basically one of the, the, the vendors or personally basically the service providers to you as a customer who are the students. So, I was obviously, I will always think that yes, I am trying to basically deliver these lectures in the slide format. Is there any way that I can improve this type of program which I am going to deliver to the students? Yes, it may be possible that I basically give some animations, give some videos bring different type of discussions in, into these programs. So, those may be different type of ways where I am always trying to improve myself to give the best level of, of quality, best level of competence for the products and the services which I am trying to deliver. Second would be as per Deming, adopt a new philosophy that recognizes that we are in a different economic area. So, as we know the economics of the overall world of the of the industrial, after the industrial organization, after uh, the way things started improving when technology came, computers came and see how the, how the development of computers, of, of robots, of chips designed for computers, for different technologies are improving rapidly almost exponentially. So, obviously, think that the products you are going to deliver or the service you are going to deliver would be in a different paradigm. Consider the for again coming back to the example which I stated for myself. If I were a, 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 a teacher in any of the school or the colleges, whether in India or abroad, my main mode of communication with the students would be the notes or maximum would be the green board which you see behind me. But nowadays with the advent of computers, with the advent of the internet, obviously I can think that in the first step rather than the blackboard, I can use the PPT slides. Later on it may be say for example, I may be able to uh, deliver the lectures which I am doing now through the video conferencing facilities. And consider on the other hand coming not on the delivering the lectures, consider that I was basically able to conduct exa examination by uh, paper and pencil or pa paper and pen concept. Maybe say for example, if you see nowadays the examinations are also co uh, conducted through online mode. By, by going sitting in the front of the computer, clicking on the answers and then you take the examination. Another can be say for example, as a teacher, I may be more interested to conduct the examination online mode. So, rather than going on the computer, I can basically develop an app 
use that app and tell the students to download that based on the downloading part which they have done, I can basically give my quizzes accordingly. So, there can be different modes of how I, de I de delivered the lectures, conduct the classes and always trying to improve or improvise that how I can basically improve the level of quality or the level of services which I am trying to give to my customers. Do not rely on mass inspection to co control quality. So, when you are doing the control quality and, and the, that this um, uh, person Deming when he is talking about, about the concepts of quality mainly the focus was on manufacturing sectors. Hence, the third point mentions that do not do the mass inspection of all the products because that would basically take a huge amount of time and the cost implications would be astronomical. So, obviously, you cannot pick and choose and basically do the quality check for each and every product. So, obviously, you need to have a good sampling plan. The word sampling plan means that you want to basically pick up a small sample from the overall population, analyze the sample in such a way and also have, a, have an indication the sample which you have picked up is actually a overall characteristics of the sample would be basically be the reflection of the what the population is. So, consider this even though may that may not give you a very actual idea. Consider I am in a, in a very big city, consider it is in North India, it is either Lucknow or Kanpur, it is Allahabad or it in East India, it can be Calcutta, in the south it can be Chennai, Madurai or in the west it can be Bombay, Gandhinagar, whatever it is. My main aim is to basically consider that what is the overall average salary or disposable income of the people who are residing in the city. But obviously, the city would have different quarters, quarters means different municipal localities where very rich people live, where basically people who earn on average salary live and there would be definitely be some areas in the city where not very that uh, affluent people live. So, they are poor. Now, if I am trying to find out the average salary, it obviously it does not behove on me that I only pick up a chunk or the sample of the, of the whole population from only part of one of the city and do, the, do my analysis. So, say for example, if I pick up all my um, observations of the sample from the quarter of the city or the area of the city where all the rich people live, obviously my overall information which I try to get from the sample would not be the best reflection of the population. Similarly, if I do it from the lowest strata of the society considering the economic background, they are very poor. If I pick up that observation from that area and then try to basically draw some inference about the inference means try to basically judge how the population characteristics are and say that the average salary or disposable income of this city is very low, then obviously that is also not right. So, I have to basically design my overall picking of the concept of sample in a such a way that it gives me the best um, information about the, the population or the best proxy of the population is there in the sample that is such that I get all the characteristics of the population from the sample by itself. So, with the third point means that do not deny, de, um, uh, rely on the overall inspection, but basically have a very scientific judicious plan. Do not award businesses to suppliers on the base of price alone but also consider quality. So, if you are trying to basically buy a furniture consider you want to basically buy some uh, cloth, consider you want, want to basically give a tender to build up a, a, a plant or you want to basically uh, give a tender for a painting of your house. So, uh, considering the fact that money is very important to you which you will obviously consider, but also try to find out that what is the overall level of quality which you can get from that particular service provider or the manufacturer. Consider the point of view of trying to buy a car. There are different cars in the industry. They would be Hyundai, they would be Tata Motors, they would be Mahindra's. Uh, whether I am talking about cars or LCVs in a very general notion, they would be uh, Volkswagen, they would be uh, Toyota, and so on and so forth. Now, obviously, the cars prices are different. Whether they are petrol or diesel, that is a different question, but they would be different. Mileages would be different. But obviously, uh, when I am trying to buy a car, cost perspective would not be the main driving factor. I will try to look that what is the overall maintenance of the car, what is the over mileage the car gives per liter of diesel or per liter of, of uh, petrol. Then, then I basically I try to find out what are the safety features of that car. I will also consider that what is the overall 
the services the car car my industry is able to give it to me then i'll also consider that what is the level of say for example boot space which i have to basically keep my luggage it may be also that what is the basically overall number of persons who can sit in the car so i'll consider all these things in such a way that over and above the price and i also able to basically consider these these services which are an integral part of the overall product which I am going to buy such that I am able to balance them properly. Always focus on continuous improvement. So, you always thinking that how you can improve the product, how you can improve the services, how you can improve the level of, of services you are going to provide, provide for that product or the service. So, keep improvising, keep improving in such a way that the customer who is the other person who will get your services, who will get your products would always be in such a position that he, he or she would get those products, get those services before that they could ever think of. The sixth point is practice modern training methods, train your employees, train your personnel and invest on the job training for an employee such that able to utilize that those training in such a way such that the benefits which, which they are able to give the overall process of manufacturing or services actually goes into when the product is delivered. Improve leaderships and practice modern supervision methods. So, the pain person who is there on the shop floor is able to basically train or able to inculcate the overall concepts what he or she has learned onto his or her employees in such a way or the subordinates in such a way that they also ingrain or inculcate into them the concepts of quality and, and continuous improvement in the process on the products. Drive out the fear. So, the word drive out of fear means that uh, people should be able to, uh, to understand that quality improvement is must, quality improvement is an essential part of any process of a services. So, hence people should be able to improvise in the positive sense that that overall concept of quality which is to be brought in the overall products scenario should be there in the system in such a way, should be there in that human being who is doing the work in such a way that he is able to utilize the extra learned by the knowledge in such a way that the quality may be improved. So, say for example, if as a worker I am able to design a new jigs and fixtures, but I know internally in my mind that the using these jigs and fixtures the overall quality of the product which will improve, but if I am afraid to use that that should want to be the case where the actual management and the person who is basically manning all those staffs, all those employees, all those subordinates should be there in such a way that he or she we should encourage that this experiment should be done in such a way that the quality level should improve. Break down the barriers between functional areas of business. So, any improvement which is happening on the shop floor 1 that information should be there in shop floor 2, so that people would be able to interact with each other and utilize the concept of learning of trying to improve the quality and this permeability should be such that the information flow, the knowledge flow should be such that people would be there to inculcate these ideas, utilize that in order to improve their overall quality for the products and the services. Eliminate targets, slogans and numerical goals for the workshop. So, obviously, do not say that we have to produce 100 units of these machines or we have to basically deliver 2000 number of say for example, sauce bottles. So, em emphasize on the fact that the quality has to be improved and once the, and obviously, it would it would definitely mean that in the initial time, whatever the time frame is, maybe months, maybe days, maybe weeks, maybe years, the overall effect of, of productivity may be affected because people more become more stringent, become more careful, try to basically be, be take more number, number of time or number of hours to work on that. Obviously, that would have an so called initial neg negative effect on the numbers of the products which you are going to manufacture or deliver. But as those slogans or numbers, slogans of numerical goals are, re are, are removed, and the concept of quality brought in the picture, you will see that and it is generally seen that in the long run, the overall implication is much more positive where once the base of quality is definitely improved, then automatically the overall production in numbers also increases. Eliminate numerical quotas and work standards. 
remove the barriers that discourage employees from doing the jobs. So, this is something to do with the, the 10th and the 11th point where people are restricted considering that actual quality uh, is not to be taken care of, when numbers is to be taken care that basically puts the hindrance on the on the employees or the subordinates who are working under you. Institute an ongoing program for education such that you educate on the new statistical tools, educate about the different type of machines which are coming, educate on the different type of raw materials you are trying to purchase as they are able to learn and improvise on their overall process under the supervision of say for example, the plant manager whoever it is. Create a structure in top management, obviously this information should be coming from the top management. So, they should also be inculcated in this idea. So, if the overall thought process from the top management are positive, it will definitely percolate down the line. So, with this I will um, end this fourth lecture and, and uh, strongly urge the students basically to study in a very philosophical terms the concept of damaging endurance so that you understand what is the actual implication of quality which you have been talking about in the last four lectures. Have a nice day. Thank you.